All right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, thank you, Alex, for setting all this up. And we just want to thank Jose Cuervo for having us and for supporting these CAP, um, the Cocktail Apprentice Talks, the alumni talks, the discussions. Um, we are so excited to talk about bartender health and balance and life and wellness today. Um, we have Amy and Marina. Um, my name's Kitty. I was a red coat in 2019 and um, one of the best experiences of my life. So if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to ask. And throughout the chat, if you guys want to enter any questions into the little chat box, um, feel free. This is gonna be kind of like an open discussion. Um, we're all amongst friends here. So anything you have to ask is encouraged. Um, I have been bartending for about six years. And over the pandemic, I became a registered uh, certified personal trainer and a certified nutritionist, as well as a 200 hour registered yoga teacher. So I've been trying to take that information and sort of balance wellness within the industry. And today we're gonna to hop into that. So I'll have Amy um, and Marina go ahead and introduce themselves and um, what they're here to talk about. And then I will give a little rundown of how the show is gonna go. So Amy, do you wanna go first and explain your role? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Amy Ward. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Forgot to put that on my name. My apologies for that. Um, I've been in the hospitality industry for well over 20 years. Uh, I'm based out of Baltimore, Maryland, and I started as a dishwasher in a crab house in Maryland, which is the most Maryland thing that you can do. Uh, and I've run every other role since then, ending with um, running bar programs here in Baltimore. And I recently stopped that recently as in two years ago, but time is a construct, so we have no idea what it is. And uh, I am focusing more on my other part of my background, which is in exercise physiology. I have two degrees in exercise physiology. I'm a certified health coach and personal trainer and also pursuing physical therapy school in the very near future. And I am obsessed with making sure your body doesn't hurt and you can stay in the, the industry for as long as possible. So I'm going to talk about uh, how to do a little bit of um, uh, body scans and then how to assess different common repetitive motion injuries that we have in our industry. Thank you. And All Marina? Right. Oh, excuse me. I'm Marina Holter. Uh, she, her pronouns as well. I'm based out of Chicago. I currently am um, a bar manager out here. I also am a run leader for Grocery Run Club, which is a nonprofit that provides groceries, yeah, Amy knows it, to low-income families. Um, they recently launched a health initiative, so I've been helping them lead their uh, monthly runs to just promote the nonprofit and promote fitness within it. Um, I am currently training for my first marathon, so I'll be talking about how to balance a very hectic training schedule with a also hectic work schedule. Um, yeah, really happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you both. Okay, so today we're going to go over just some basic anatomy. Mostly we'll be talking about like your joints, how to keep them healthy. Um, I think that is super important, especially since we're moving so much in our jobs. I'll talk about fascia and what it is and how it might be adding to some of the aches and pains that we're feeling. And then we will go through just a quick little like five minute pre-shift yoga flow to kind of warm everything up and get you flexible and moving for your next shift. And then we'll do a post-shift flow as well just to help you unwind and relax. Um, and then Amy will jump into talking about repetitive stress injuries and how to um, do the body scans to be a little bit more aware of yourself and your body and what's going on. And Marina will talk about her marathon training and how she balances all of that, like we said. So jumping right in, um, fascia. Fascia is something that I think is really, really interesting and really cool. You can kind of picture it like being um, a cobweb that runs throughout your entire body. It is a connective tissue and it sort of actually builds up day after day, like night after night. So it encases all of your muscles, it runs through your blood vessels, your nerves, your organs. Um, it's literally like that, that picture of a cobweb running throughout your body. And when you go to sleep at night, it starts to dry up a little bit and then form and, and um, build more and more of a cobweb. And so when you wake up in the morning, um, 
we call it like the fuzz, like the fuzz starts to build between your muscles while you're sleeping. And so when you wake up in the morning and you stretch and you do all your movements and you get moving, you sort of help to melt away the fuzz and get it lubricated. Um, but if you're not moving, say you have like a shoulder injury and it just stayed in place, you know, while you work and then you go to sleep and you don't move your shoulder day after day, layers of these fascia start to build up and then it gets harder and harder to break apart. So the less movement we do, the worse for our bodies. Um, so it's really important to warm up and to get movement going, especially into all the little nooks and crannies before you go and do your shift. Because as Amy's gonna talk about, repetitive stress injuries in this bartending world are so real and they're so, um, there's so much long-term damage as the bartender. Like, you know, you come across like, the 35, 40 year old bartenders that are all grumpy and like my back hurts, my knees hurt. Um, and hopefully with this talk, we can help you prepare for a longer sustainable future. Um, repetitive stress injuries come from, you know, when we're hitting our tins hundred times a night and you have all these little tendons and ligaments in your wrists and they start to get these little micro tears. And those micro tears or micro traumas start to, they try to heal themselves and they become inflamed and then you're doing this day after day and they never really get a chance to heal. So strengthening our joints and warming them up and um, strengthening our, our ligaments and our tendons is incredibly important in bartender health and longevity. So, some, so your joints are basically, we have synovial joints and there are shoulders, our hips, our knees, our ankles, our wrists, our elbows. And joints are two, like an articulation point where two bones are meeting to form movement. Exactly, yeah. So we have our hinge joint, our elbow, our shoulders have so much movement in them. They're, they're called ball and socket joints. The same with our hips, those are ball and socket joints. And typically when you think of like a ball and socket, you think of like, you know, a big socket with like a ball that fits into it and kind of rotates around that. And that's true for our hips, but for our shoulders, the, sho the joint is actually, the, the ball is bigger than the socket. So you can think of like a golf ball sitting on a tee and it's held in place by all of these ligaments and muscles surrounding it. So the shoulders are really actually fragile and easily injured. Um, that's why a lot of people have like frozen shoulder from the, the repetitive stress injuries and um, you know, a lot of shoulder aches and neck pain. So we need to be aware of how they sort of work in order to, um, I, I like to think in details, right? If I know how something works, then I'm able to prevent it in the future. So if I know how my joints work, then I'm able to understand the, the mechanics behind it just the same way as bartending. Like if you just learn a recipe, you might forget it. But if you know it's a variation of an old fashioned, then you're going to remember it more. Um, so we'll get into the details. So in between your joints, you have some cartilage, but you also have something called synovial fluid. And synovial fluid is, it's super interesting. It's a non-Newtonian fluid. So, which means if you ever played with cornstarch and water as a kid growing up, um, when you mix it and you pick it up, it sort of liquefies and falls through your fingers. But when you put pressure on it, it forms a solid. So that's really similar to what's in between your joints, sort of lubricating and cushioning them. When you warm up your joints and you warm up that synovial fluid and start to add a little pressure, the, the synovial fluid thickens and you have more of a cushion in between your bones. If you don't warm it up and you just jump right into bartending, then you're, you're gonna be more likely to have injury because you're gonna have a little bit more um, contact, less cushion and you just won't be ready for what's ahead. You know, maybe you wake up and go right to work and all of your fascia is really stiff and dry and your synovial fluid isn't as thick or cushioned as it could be. And you just jump right in and you're twisting and you're bending. And then now you're starting to get these little micro tears and um, bad things happen, <laughs> especially in the long run. It may not feel like it right away, but um, doing this over time is, is really poor for your body. So. Um, with that, we are going to jump into a little pre-shift flow, sort of showing you how to warm up all of your joints. Um, feel free to do it with me or just watch and take some notes. But 
basically I wanted to be able to show you guys how you can um, how you can move your body, especially if you're going to be like, say you have your shoes on and you forget to do your stretches. Like you can do this on break. You can do this in, um, you know, in your house right before you leave in your garage, wherever you are. So some things just to warm up all of our joints. First, we'll start standing. And if you have the time, um, feel free to Take a nice big inhale in and exhale. We'll bring our hands to heart center. I like to set an intention for the day. So for me, it's typically like, um, you know, today I'll be present or I will find joy in the small things, something like that in order to um, tell yourself how you want your day to go, right? So take a moment, set your intention for the day and then we'll get into a little stretch. So we'll start with our, we're gonna work our way down and up. So we'll start with our ankles and you're gonna take either your right or left leg and step it forward and then keep your foot flexed and you'll start to get a nice little stretch in your calf. You'll lean forward um, and press into the mat. At the same time, you're gonna do the same thing with your wrist. So you'll flex your wrist and pull your wrist back. So we're stretching our ankles and our wrists at the same time. And we're gonna move quickly through this just to give you guys an idea of how, it, how fast it could go, but you can hold these stretches for as long as you want. So after we do it on one side, we'll repeat it on the other, stretching into our calf, sort of bending into it and stretching our wrist. And then we're gonna stretch the top of our foot. So you'll take a step back and point your foot and stretch the, the top of your foot, as well as the same time taking your hand and stretching the back the top of your wrist. And then we'll switch sides, do it on the other side. You can take a longer step back, you can take a shorter step back, whatever works for you and your body. Okay, come to center. So you're standing again, and we'll inhale, raise your arms above your head. And exhale, twist to one side. So you wanna keep your lower body facing the front and think about twisting from your midsection. And then you'll inhale, come back to center. Exhale, twist on the other side. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, we'll do it one more time, but this time roll your wrists out in one like clockwise or counterclockwise, but one direction, twist and roll your wrists. Inhale, back to center, and then switch the direction that you're rolling your wrists and twist to the other side. So now we're warming up our mid back, our wrists. We got our ankles. Come back to center. And then we're gonna start working into our hips and our knees. So you'll take a step back and you'll come into this crescent lunge. So here you're gonna be stretching into your hip flexor. The stronger you press back into your leg, the more you'll kind of feel that stretch. And you can bend and straighten um, depending on how intense you want that stretch to be. Make sure that your knee is above your ankle and facing forward. Never let it fall in or out. We'll raise our arms up overhead, take a nice inhale, and then exhale, you'll come to warrior two. So if you've done some yoga, you'll recognize this. Think about keeping your back leg strong and pressing through the pinky side of your toe. Instead of rolling your foot inward, you wanna press out. Again, keep your knee in line. Don't let it waver in or out. From here, you'll take another inhale, lean forward, up and back into reverse warrior. You can rest your hand, your back hand on your thigh. And then here, I like to kind of open and close my wrist, like I'm flicking water off my fingertips. Again, that'll really warm up those really delicate wrists. You can take your gaze down at your back foot or up at your hand. And I like to kind of feel into where I feel that. So when I look up, I feel it more on the back of my tricep. And when I look down, I feel it on the back of my neck. So there we're gonna be warming up all those little ligaments and tendons. And from here, I'll come back to warrior two. And then exhale and come into an extended side angle. So you're resting your front forearm on your knee. And then we'll make some big circles with that top arm, warming up our shoulder joint. And if there's a spot that feels good, you can reverse directions. You can kind of move into it a little bit. Start moving all of those good muscles and joints around. 
and then make sure you're getting a nice long side stretch on your side as well. Okay, and then come back up to warrior two, straighten both your legs, and then we can just switch sides. So we'll come to the other direction, we'll go into our crescent lunge, we'll feel into that nice hip flexor stretch, straightening and bending that back leg. Inhale, arms up, exhale into warrior two. And once you get the hang of it, you can be kind of like flowing and moving. We'll inhale, come back up into a reverse warrior. Um, remember to move your gaze up and down, flick your fingers. Not really meant to like break a sweat here, mostly just trying to warm up our body, break up the fascia, get some movement into our joints, get them nice and lubricated. And then you'll come into an extended side angle. And again, rotating your shoulder, your arm, Nice big circles. Awesome. Okay, now come back up, straighten your legs. And then that is basically a nice little warm up for your pre shift flow. Um, you can do it as much as you want. You can do it while you're watching TV. Again, you can do it in the back room on your break. Um, all great things. So now we're going to do a little post shift flow. So this is meant to be sort of a yin yoga, where yin yoga, you hold poses anywhere from like three to like 10 minutes a piece. And when I get home from work, one of the first things I do is like legs up the wall where you lay and you just put your legs up, but it really increases the blood flow and everything. Um, but we'll go through some other things here. So I'm gonna go into a supported child's pose. This is actually an inversion. So you're, you're not an inversion, but, um, but a, a very soft forward bend. So it's really good. You can just like sit on your knees. Um, I feel like a lot of people, most people have done child's pose before. And then you can come down onto a pillow or a bolster. And I like to put TV on or put a little meditation app on and just unwind from the day. If you find yourself laying one head, um, laying your head on one side, then you can switch, turn your head about halfway through and make sure you get both sides of your neck like um, relax so that you're getting the same movement on both sides. So after you unwind in your child's pose and you kind of decompress from the day, we will move the, move the bolster out of the way and come onto your stomach. And if you have a bad back, then you can just lay here, lay in this prone position and really just let your back kind of unwind, relieve the stress. Um, if you feel up to it, you can come into a sphinx pose. So you'll kind of pull your body up, um, direct your elbow right beneath your shoulder, keep your forearms and hands flat on the ground, and then pull your chest forward and through. Um, try not to look too far up because that'll hyperextend your neck and we don't want anything too intense right now. This is just meant to be a nice little unwinding, relaxing pose. And again, you can stay here you know, three to five minutes, doing some deep breathing, really allowing your back to kind of unwind. From there, you can flip over onto your back and we will do some windshield wipers to kind of massage into your sit bones and your glutes. So come up on your hands and or on your hands and then your, keep your knees bent with your feet flat. Take your fingers and point them behind you. Sit up tall so that you feel a good stretch in your chest and your pecs. And then just windshield wiper your knees from side to side, massaging into your glutes, kind of feeling a nice stretch on the back side of your body and your hips. And you can do this for a couple minutes, warming up and feeling the connective tissue kind of release from standing all day. From there, we'll go into like a figure four or a reclining pigeon. So you're welcome to either lay down and keep one leg bent, take the other leg in. I love this stretch right here just because it's a really good release for your hip flexor. But moving from that, keep your ankle flexed to protect your knee joint and cross your ankle over your knee. And then you'll pull that other leg in so that you're in this reclining pigeon. You can also do it seated. Um, you can keep one leg straight. And if you're flexible enough, you can grab onto your leg and sort of move it back and forth, moving with it. Um, 
and feeling into that. So if you're here with me, then release that leg, come back and do the other side. And again, if you're doing this after a shift, just try to hold these poses as long as you can. Um, allowing your body to sit in one of these stretches for anywhere, is, even if you can only hold it for like 90 seconds. Once you hit that 90 second mark, your connective tissue really starts to open up and release. And you start to trigger your parasympathetic nervous system, which is gonna allow your body to get into that rest and relaxation mode. So you're moving from that fight or flight and you can, you can let that go and come back up. Um, we'll come into a butterfly. So sitting tall on your sit bones, um, have a nice tall spine, roll your shoulders up and down your back. If you want, you can put some pillows below your knees to help that if your hip flexors are really tight. And, you're, um, and then we will take our hands and we'll actually start to massage our feet. So we know from being on our feet all day that this is gonna feel amazing afterwards. And just work your way up, take your fingers and even get into in between your toes, like you're holding, <laughs> you're holding your toes and they're your best friends. Um, so we'll work that out and just get some release throughout your feet. But like I was saying, you wanna hold these poses for as long as you can and, and get that parasympathetic nervous system going um, because we are, we are in such a fight or flight um, mode throughout our shift that by the time we get home, we really need to change that direction of our bodies and how our nervous system is handling everything. So from there, we're gonna do one more pose. You can take your hands and lift your knees up to come back in safely. And then we'll go back to our backs. And this is just gonna be a gentle reclined twist. So you'll bring one leg up, bring your knee into your chest and twist it over your body. So now we're getting into our mid back. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I see some people having fun. Um, we're getting into our mid back. We stretch our arm out, the opposite arm, and then you can kind of look over that arm. You can think about that maybe that you have a paperweight kind of pulling your shoulder down to the ground to increase that twist a little bit. And take some nice deep breaths here. And on your next inhale, you'll come up to the middle and you'll just switch sides. And I would love to take you guys just through an hour long yin class holding these poses and walking you through some meditations, but we do have a lot of ground to cover. So we're just kind of moving quickly. One more nice deep inhale and a big sigh, exhale. Okay, so you come back to center. You can kind of bring your knees in and rock and roll yourself up, massage your back on the way and we will come to sit. Thank you guys for running through that with me. Um, we will hop into Amy's talk now on repetitive stress injuries, and then uh, Marina will take it from there. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we can, <laughs> we can get to them later. Awesome, thanks guys. That was lovely, Kitty. I, uh, you are, again, speaking my love language. This is all the stuff that I love very much, and I. It's nice for the first time to hear another bartender speaking in the uh, nerdy anatomy language that I like to use so much. So everything kind of building off of what Kitty just did is super important. There's a multitude of ways to think about your body. I think what's most important is that people in the industry need to treat themselves like they are athletes because you are an athlete. Um, you need to prep your body for the athletic endeavor that you're about to do, which is what Kitty showed us. And you also need to cool down after that athletic endeavor is done. So that's what she just kind of showed us. Um, when she was talking about joints, she told you about everything that is major. We've got the neck, the shoulders, the back, the hips, the knees, the ankles, wrists, elbows, all of that. All of those are subject to getting hurt. Um, and a lot of the reason is because we need to think about our body on a system of levers. So if you were to think about yourself as more of a marionette, 
that's probably a better way to kind of go about your, your day. When we start to take our joints out of 90 degree angles from, from the midsection of the body, that's when injuries start to occur. So if you're a person with a high shake, um, that can tend to have a lot of stress on your body. Um, so I always try to encourage people to take a look or film themselves while they're bartending for a little bit, especially when they're fatigued, so they can start to see what their body transitions to over time as they start to get tired. That way you can start to assess where you might be having pains or why you're having pain. The fun thing about the body, which is awesomely weird in every way, shape, or form, is that even if you are having injuries or pain in the shoulders, it could be coming from your feet. So the way that Kitty was kind of showing you to kind of go up the river and down the river is that pain can travel. So if we're not wearing the right shoes, our feet might really hurt, but it's going to manifest itself in the hips. Um, and if the hips are hurting from something else, it might result in the shoulders. So there's a lot of different goofy things that the body likes to do. So a key thing to get in tune with what is actually happening to us, what kind of repetitive motion we might be experiencing is to be a bit more mindful about what our body is telling us. Our body is very much trying at all times to communicate desperately with us as to what it needs, what's not working and what is working. So we need to learn how to tap into our own mindfulness and listen and be more receptive to what the body is telling us. Um, I want to, I'm probably gonna go a little bit shorter on this because I don't have the time for Marina to, to talk, but a good way to start listening to your body is by doing a body scan. And that will be something that you can practice while you just wake up and you're still laying in the bed and something before you go to bed at night. And a body scan starts with starting at the toes and working your way all the way up. So if you all to go for wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just kind of stretch your legs out. Um, if you wanna be laying down right now, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Start by wiggling your toes and see what the toes might be telling us. As you are progressing from the toes, we can start pedaling our ankles. So we can start pushing and pulling dorsiflex and plantar flex with the toes to kind of feel what the ankles are telling us. From here, you can think about flexing the muscles in the calf or trying to press them into the ground uh, and see if there's any pain in the shins, if there's any pain in the calf muscles. Then you can get a little flutter going in the legs and see what's happening with the knees. Knees are gonna be a huge target of pain for us, mainly because we are not always wearing the right shoes. Um, we're also on surfaces that aren't necessarily designed for us to be bartending on, nor do we have protective mats on there. Uh, so there could be a lot happening here. We go right up into the quads and the hamstrings and we try flexing our quads. So think about squeezing those muscles in the quads and if you can do it, it's going to be harder to do in this situation, but think about trying to squeeze into your, into your hamstrings, the backside of these, the upper leg, right? Are they telling you anything? Is it saying I'm a little achy? Is it giving you a little tinge or a burn? This is what you got to put into your mental inventory. For our hips, there's lots of things that we can do. You could try pulling your knees into your chest to feel if there's anything going on with that. My favorite thing to do is alternate squeezing one cheek at a time. Left cheek, right cheek, left cheek, right cheek. What are your glutes telling you? Your glutes are supporting everything in the body and getting work so hard. So they tend to can tell you a little bit about what's going on. You can progress up from the hips so we can go right to our belly button and we can think about pulling that belly button into the chest, into the spine, <laughs> which will curl our pelvises up towards our face and relax. So it looks a little bit like just pulling the belly button to the spine and relax. And again, you can do this all while you're just sitting down, laying down, whatever. You don't have to get up and do this. Think about squeezing your tummy. Is there any pains in your belly? Are you feeling kind of, is there indigestion? Do you have, you know, is something not feeling great there? Should you give a little extra attention to your belly today? Then you can bring it up towards the chest. You can think about trying to open the chest by squeezing the shoulder blades together, pinching the shoulder blades together, pulling them down towards the mat, towards your butt. 
You can think about rolling the shoulders out both directions. How are my shoulders feeling? Do I want to pop up, pop down? Where's my pain at for that? Or is it feeling good? And then you can try to extend from the elbows. I have so many people that I have to respond to in terms of golfer, golfer's elbow and tennis elbow that everybody's having issues with right now. There's something very special going around, <laughs> going around the industry at this moment. And then with your, your wrist. Is, what is that? Can I ask? What's, what's golfer tennis elbow? That's like, well, that's going to be whether you have pain on the inside or outside of the elbow. A lot of it comes from, it's generally on people's shaking arm. Uh, but I found it on the supporting arm as well, because people will try to do one hand or perhaps they're holding kind of an awkward manner with their supporting hand. So that's why I ask people to kind of pay attention to how they shake. Like, are you going full Kermit? Are you up here for some reason? <laughs> uh, I like to, for me personally, what works for my body is pushing a tin straight out away yeah. as if, if I was doing CPR, that's helpful for me. And that keeps my shoulders and my joints in a healthy manner. Um, so golfer's elbow is going to be more so on the, uh, I'm sorry, tennis elbows on the outside, golfer's elbows on the inside, but I might be mixing up my, my, my things right now. So it's basically inside elbow pain, outside elbow pain. So right on the actual funny bone or on the inside here. Awesome. Um, so we have, yeah, go ahead, Lee guy. Um, is that the same as tendonitis? And is there like dietary things that help with that as well? So, so tendonitis can happen in a multi, wherever you have tendons, right? Uh, for us, in terms of where you're generally going to find it in bartenders, almost always it's going to be on the, the front side or back side of the forearm. Uh, and that will be if you start to feel like if you're, if it feels like you have a rubber band connecting your hand to the to the to this portion right here before you get to the elbow, that might be a good sign of tendonitis. Uh, and it can happen um, from where the thumb actually rotates in here, so the brachioradialis. So your rotating muscle, that's often where I tend to see people getting it. Um, but tendonitis can again happen wherever there's there's tendon. So you can find it happens in your ankles as well. Um, it's in terms of nutritional things that can help. It's really a, a well-balanced diet is going to be your best friend. I think things with lots of fiber, with lots of good, good sugars, um, lots of protein and good fats is always going to be on your best side. I can give recommendations as to, I can tell you what is good for your body, but in my practice as a health coach, I am not at liberty to say, this is what solves the problem. Uh, that is the limitations of my scope of practice. Um, but diet exercise always in terms of keeping your body chock full of electrolytes, um, making sure you have your vitamins and minerals that are generally coming from whole foods that you eat versus trying to take supplements. If you need supplements, you take the supplements. Um, but yeah, uh, good nutrition is always going to be critical, critical to playing into your physical balance. Um, but so with that body scan, you would go everywhere up neck, head, clenching your teeth, relaxing your face, feeling your face and seeing what's going on, but listening to your body and knowing what it's telling you, whether it says the feet are achy, uh, whether my knees are angry, achy, ugh, achy, my hips or whatever it might be, listen to your body. Doing the body scan in the morning and the nighttime is a good way to understand what our body is feeling that day. So we can either pay a little bit more attention to those areas that are feeling tender or uh, assess them at the end of the night and decide on some kind of recovery method there, whether it's just a good night's rest or maybe you need some heat or ice on a specific part of your body. The other thing I will um, leave with so we can leave time for Marina is um, two of the biggest things that I do see in bartenders all the time is gonna be something called thoracic kyphosis, which is the hunchback, and lumbar lordosis, which is a duck butt, essentially. And that is strictly because the way that bars are designed are not meant for us, right? Our knees hit our wells and it forces us to pitch forward in order to hand off drinks to people and, and just generally work in our wells. And then we round over at the top of the back and our compensation is the the duck butt. So ways you can think about doing counteractive things for that during the day is when you're on bar, 
Try to set your up, yourself up with your shoulders coming back together and down. Try to have that good posture and maintain that shoulder blade rounded back. As Kitty was saying, the shoulders are the most movable joint that you have, but it's held together by four kind of muscles that sort of brace it. And then one tiny little thing called labrum, little, little tiny ligament that gets torn in an instant. So you get lots of mobility, but it's at the sacrifice of it being a very weakly constructed joint. Um, so that's a really good thing to do. That and also tucking that pelvis forward so we can kind of get rid of the duck butt. So think about kind of squeezing your butt together, pulling that belly button towards the, the spine, and that will help you kind of stay in that upright position. Um, and I think that will help counteract a lot of the back injuries, which trickle out to the shoulders, to the arms, down the legs, um, and, and all things that can kind of start at that center point. So. I'm gonna stop, I could go forever. So I wanna, uh, Marina to be able to talk about her magical journey of marathon training. Yeah, well, first I just wanna say like, I was like, I'm, I'm sitting down, but I was like moving my toes and I was like, oh, everything hurts. Like, it's just the reality of like, that's kind of marathon training. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of things that like have made me think what both Kitty and Amy have been saying of like, our bodies aren't meant to hurt. Like they're not supposed to, we're not supposed to have all this crazy knee pain. I think that's always like one of the first things somebody like asked me about with money. They're like, don't your knees hurt? Like, don't you do this? And it's like, oh, if you follow all of these other steps, like my body's supposed to work. Like it's supposed to be this functional thing. And you know, if I take care of it, if I'm aware of it, if I feed it well, it's going, it's going to work for my advantage. Um, so yeah, a uh, quick running thing. I've been running on and off since I was 13. I did cross country in high school, um, really pushed myself hard, ended up tearing both of my hamstrings back to back years, compartment syndrome in one leg. Basically I was just like trying too hard, um, but it's always been something that I like rely on where it's like, if I get bad news, it's like the first thing I do. If something is good, if I have too much energy, I'm like, I'm going for a run. Um, and there was just a string of like very bad things that were happening often. Like, I mean, we were in the middle of a pandemic. Also life is still happening. And I just found myself gravitating more towards running and there was a shift that happened in my mind where like one day I was running and I was like, oh, this feels good. Like I feel fast. I feel strong. I feel capable. And like, this is cool. Like, let me, races weren't happening at this point. So I was like, I'm just going to pick a day that I'm running a half marathon and I'm going to do a four month training plan for that. And then I'm just going to hit up Lakeshore, have somebody at the end with some water and I'm just going to run. And that just kind of changed everything where it taught me how to schedule in my workouts. So having like, it's funny looking back on my calendar and like since beginning of March, like I've had every single day, like what's planned out for that day, whether it's just like a three mile run or like I'm going to do a 20 minute yoga class or it's a 20 mile run. Um, and that's taken a lot of the pressure off of fitting it into my schedule because it's already in my schedule. I know that there is like that time that is blocked off during my day. And granted, it does change depending on like, I have a meeting I have to go into, you know, you have to figure it out. But there's just been the mind uh, mindset shift of if I don't do this workout today, it's going to make my workout in two days even more hard. Um, but yeah, I... I'm losing my train of thought. Um, but a few things, like I've just had a lot of people as of recent, like start to reach out to me about running. And I've like kind of constructed this like list of like things that I find very helpful in regards to running. Um, so one thing is making sure you have proper shoes. This was something I did not realize about until I got most fitted most, re most recently, where I found out I've been wearing a whole size too small my entire adult life. <laughs> it's not a funny thing to like mess with like your feet are kind of important so if you haven't got your feet sized recently like 
Thank you. We haven't done it since we were kids. When I tell people, like, you have to get measured in the middle of the day because your feet swell up at least a half to a whole size by that time. It's, it's insane. Weird. It's insane. I felt like a complete dummy just being like, oh, I I thought my feet were just supposed to feel snug in my shoes. They're not. You're supposed to be able to wiggle your toes. So go get go get sized. See if you need different shoes. You might have to throw Marie, out all your shoes, but. <laughs> Marina, what shoes do you wear to work in? Uh, to work in. Ooh, I should grab them. Hold on. Give me one second. I have a couple of different pairs. Cause I'm always looking for the right shoes to work in. It's like a ever like lifelong battle. <laughs> yeah. So I, um, I have two shoes that I alternate, um, just because I try and not wear the same shoe two days in a row, just because we overcompensate for our feet so much. And like, it's good to give them just different kind of traction. So I alternate between a high support shoe, which are these don't mind that they're so dirty, but these hokas, um, I can't remember what model they are. Let's see, Hoka Bondies, but I can wear, I can work like a 12 hour shift and there's so much comfort for the entire soul and they're great. Um, I also alternate between these like very minimal Vibram bottom New Balances. So they're slip resistant and this I'll wear for like a shorter shift or if I know I'm gonna be like running around a lot more just so I can build up a little bit more of that fit foot mobility. Um, but I try and alternate like every other day. That's so interesting. I, I, I like that tip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it just hurts wearing the same shoe the same day in a row. Like I think about that with running or I was like, oh, I have different shoes when I want to do a speed workout and I have different shoes when I do a long run. Like I should have different shoes in day-to-day -day life, depending on like you know, we don't think about often, like how much am I going to walk today and what shoes am I wearing? Yeah. If you, and if you work more than an eight hour shift, you need to take two pair and switch them in the middle. It's like a brand yeah. new song wow. life like that and, and a second set of compression socks. Yes. Compression socks. Huge. So nice. If you don't know, basically they go all the way up to your knee, hold everything in and it's yeah. Game changer for sure. Um, okay. Other things for running all of the stretching and hip mobility. I feel like I probably do that almost as much as I'm running. So it's like, as soon as I come home, um, I have my foam roller. I have like an acupressure mat. I have like a little tennis ball that I roll around my feet. Um, the windshield wipers with the knees, that's huge. Um, now I've become the person that's like, I'm stretching throughout my shift where, you know, if I have like two minutes free. I'm like, all right, guys, everybody, you know, we're rotating. We're like, I've, I've like made my whole staff. Yeah. That one's insane. If you, I don't know if you guys, are, but, um, yeah, that's huge. Um, physical therapy, Amy and I were talking about this beforehand, but like I've been going preventatively just because I do have past injuries and it's so nice having somebody else just assess the weakness in your body. It's like, oh, I, th I thought my glutes were weak, but thank you for really telling me I need to work on them. You know, it's a little, <laughs> little check, but um, one of the most prominent things for me has been nutrition because seeing myself as an athlete, I'm like, oh, this really makes me want to change how I eat. And it's, I'm not as satisfied, you know, like coming home after a shift and like, heating up a frozen pizza. It's like, oh, that's going to make me feel terrible tomorrow when I have to do 10 miles, you know? So it's, it's taught me to be very disciplined with like thinking about what I'm going to eat throughout the day. Um, I've utilized a nutritionist called MetPro, um, which basically they're helpful for runners and just kind of dictate um, nutrition and macros based on how heavy you're working out that week. Um, but I always bring snacks with me. I always have like a macronutrition bar or an apple, a banana, or like people know I brought my dinner to work when it's like a huge thing of salad. And like, you know, I'm making everybody else eat these things. And it's interesting how much that does like bleed into your work environment where I now have my coworkers as I'm less than three work three weeks from marathon. I'm like, okay, if you see me trying to eat a chicken tender, like, you know what to do. <laughs> like, it's time to yell at me. Um, but hand in hand with nutrition, uh, drinking has been very hard for me as of late. Um, I've switched to just vermouth shots behind the bar because I think a shot of tequila would ruin me at this point. <laughs> um, 
and it's very occasionally and it's just I do love a beer so I always have like non-alcoholic beer in the fridge which sounds very lame but they're pretty tasty um and just do satisfy but yeah it's it's crazy how much like that mindset mindset changes where it's like okay I do still love bartending and love all of this but you know there's a greater reason for why like I want to stay without pain and stay healthy and it's you know so I can run and your body's telling you that it loves being hydrated and oh my gosh being dehydrated so it didn't say I learned how much I need to be hydrated as I'm like carrying my like crazy hydration pack and I'm running and I'm like whoa I drank four liters of water <laughs> like that's insane it's insane um yeah, I'm, uh, I'm always at work, like the boys will be taking shots and I'll just be like chugging a glass of water. And they're, they joke, they're like, nobody's going to take the water away from you. I'm like, you guys need to drink more water. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're like, you need to get a camel bag and just work with it. It's so like, I think after every, every time you guys take a shot, every time you do something, chug a glass of water afterwards. Cause I always every time you're by the computer. So if I'm like putting in a drink order, I make myself just like take a quick sip. It's like, brilliant yeah I'm I'm working a high volume spot so I'm, I'm by the register a lot but <laughs> it is helpful to be like okay like if I'm here in this location this is when I take a drink of water or like have your water yeah back. it's it's crazy I was just I gave a talk slash made a little video about uh dental health for this month uh and oral hygiene and how important it is for when you have dry mouth which is a result of of drinking. So like you drink alcohol, alcohol shrinks your salivary glands. You can't pr produce spit. So you get dry mouth that allows for more bacteria to grow in your mouth, which contributes to a ton of other negative health effects. And like having that water just to be able to rinse, if you're going to drink, have a rinse in between because alcohol loves metabolizing the sugar, sugar loves bacteria, bacteria can be awesome, but also there are bad bad bacteria that just want to jack you up. So always water, hashtag hydro homies for life. <laughs> you got to have that water on you at all times. Oh, I love it. I'm just seeing if anybody had any questions. Just for getting to that point. Yeah, these are tough things to do in 45 minutes when you want to talk about all the things, but it's, it's so nice to be around uh, seeing that this is like becoming more regular movement between people uh, to know that hydration is a point of topic and bringing your own snacks is happening on, on a regular basis and and not drinking is like the norm and that's totally fine and you can absolutely be productive in the industry still while not drinking like mm -hmm. all of these taboos are going away and it's it's really really nice to see so yeah, yeah I think I think we're on the verge of something very good <laughs> Yep, taking a long time, but it's it's, it's there. I can feel it. So. Well, I think we're gonna start to wrap up. I just wanted to. Do you guys have anything else you want to add? Um, we covered most everything. Drink water, stretch, <laughs> warm yourself up, cool yourself I, down. I think a big thing too, like when I was doing, I often have times with have a difficult time with yoga because my body is banged up. I played sports and I had that old school mentality of play through the pain. Pain is a sign of weakness. And I'm, I'm feeling it now. Like I, I am 40 years old. I am like, my body doesn't feel super awesome, but I'm still using it to the best of my abilities. So being able to find a practice that works for your body is super important. Like you can do every modification of what, what you were showing us for the warm up that works for your body. So it's important that people don't compare their bodies to other people. We may have the same bones and we may have the same muscles, but every single body has a different story that it tells, uh, being through whatever kind of traumas it might have, physical, emotional, mental, that really impacts our ability to move. So find a practice that makes your body feel good. Like the fact that you have found running feels very good for your body and you've got yourself in a prime position for nutrition and everything like that that complements it that's huge people need to just try to move their body and find joy in the movements because there's going to be some kind of practice that works for you and whatever your body has decided it's like these are my limits and i'm super cool with them and i'm not <laughs> doing anything else 
Like knowing your limits is huge. I mean, like I was supposed to do a 20 mile run today and like mile 11, I was like, you know what? It's not happening. Like I gave up at mile 12 and I'm like, I know my body. I know I can do it. I just know I'm going to hurt myself if I continue. So like, I think the more you learn to do like those body scans and like being aware of your body, you know, when you have your limits, it's like, even with like a shift, you know, we know when like we're pushing through and we think we can handle it. Sometimes we just need two minutes to breathe and like take a step back. So that should never like weakness should never be seen as like, you know, or limitations shouldn't be seen as a weakness. Right. Limitations um, are not weakness. And you didn't give up. You stopped because your body said 12 miles is perfectly fine for me today. Yep. <laughs> That's enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's switching that mentality, even those like subtle little cues of saying those different words that you like reframe it in a positive mindset are a really good way. It spreads like wildfire when you do that positive kind of discussion and and, and preach that to other people too. Yeah, you know, it's happening. I see it. I love it. Awesome. Well, if anybody has any questions, um, do you guys want to leave your Instagram handles or your social media? Yeah. I'm going to put my email into the chat because as part of listening to my body and what I need, I have not done social media in a, in quite a long time on my business page because I can't do it right now. My brain says, no, thank you. However, if you want to follow me on my personal page, you can see lots of pictures of my cat. (laughs) See me and no for ought to go game down at all times. (laughs) Well, thank you, Tales of the Cocktail. Thank you, Alex. Um, Thank you, Jose Cuervo, for hosting this and and making us able to do this. I am so grateful to have had you guys on here, Marina and Amy. Um, And let's let's normalize these talks in the future. Let's let's start taking water shots. Yes. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.